are two words that incite fear and dread in the life of an RVer. Moving day. If you're considering buying an RV, a travel trailer, a motorhome, you're going to want to watch this video because it's not all glamour and freedom and fun. Moving day is a lot of work. I start to get the butterflies in my stomach the day before and just because of the unknown and what could happen on the road and also excitement for travel. So we're gonna take you through what moving day looks like. Luckily, we can speed up the process. It usually takes us about an hour. So we're gonna show you some of the things first on what we do the day before we leave. Typically, Ryan is outside doing all the outside things and I'm in here doing all the inside things. We have checklists that we use every single time and these are all the checklists for inside and outside. I put them in just little plastic sleeves because it can be raining sometimes when you're hooking up. I typically will get these down the day before and start going over the things that we need to do. So what we have here is we have the Motor Carriers Road Atlas. Um, this we just picked up at a Loves and inside here you can see on the maps all of these lines here, the orange lines, are truck routes. Um, so we feel pretty good that if we were to be on those particular roads we'd be pretty safe in our rig given its size. We also have these two directories here, um, Mountain Directory East, Mountain Directory West. Our daughter picked these up for us. These show extremely steep grades. If you go through and look at uh, some of the states that they represent, um, it really tells you that you probably shouldn't even be on some of those grades. And we have our Garmin. This is an RV Garmin, and it is. Uh, we have our height, weight, length, all the things uh, in there for the rig, so it hopefully takes us down safe roads. Here we have our Furion. Um, this is something that we put in. It links up to our back camera so that as I'm backing up, we can see. But I also use it while we're on the road because um, as we're passing uh, trucks or cars, I can see that I've gotten beyond them and it's safe to move over. So I use that quite a bit. Lastly, here's our little TST. Um, this is our tire system uh, monitoring for pressure. And you can see here, I have it fired up right now, and it's taking a reading not only of the temperature, but the pressure in the tires. Another tool that Chris uses on her phone is an app called uh, Highway Weather. This app allows us to see what the wind speeds are and when those, uh, you know, if it's safe to travel, basically. We don't want to be in high winds, so it again helps us to see when those winds are during the time of the day and how high they're going to be. One of the things Ryan does before we leave the day before is to sew his blackstone grill. He actually puts everything away that we have outside, all these tables and chairs. And we usually have a mat out here, but we didn't need it with the concrete. In the master bath this is our washer and dryer in here what I do to stow this I just make sure that they're this is off and that we close this and those are tight I don't have to do anything in the closet other than make sure that it's tight uh, some people have to tie down their hangers but none of our hangers ever fall the biggest task in the bathroom is buttoning down the shower so the first thing that I'll do is do the shower curtain and I Tie it to this pole. And the reason I do that is because I don't want, if I didn't tie it, this thing would just flat back and forth and that would be a huge mess. So I also stow this shower head there because that'll fall. 
and take down a few bottles that are up in here because those would fall. In theory, that should stay put. It's never fallen yet. Brian got me this great magnifying mirror and I just have to make sure that that is strapped down. But that's really the last thing other than making sure this door is open and locked in the open position because of the slides. The master bedroom is going to, both walls are going to come in, so we have to make sure everything is clear on the floor. Last thing is, is I turn the lights out and make sure this door is also in the travel position, which is all the way open and locked. From our last experience going through Louisiana, um, we now secure our TV pretty well. Not only do we have locking brackets behind here, but we've taken an extra step that we're going to put some straps across the front here. So this area here is my workspace uh, for my day-to-day -day job, and um, I've taken a couple of things down already. So today, really, everything's you know been pulled apart, and I just start to put things where they belong. And this is my way messier side to the office desk, and. So it, it takes me a little bit of time to stow all of this. It all has to come down. Great to secure that. Ryan usually leaves his mouse pad there. Okay, so our Berkey is something we also have to deal with on moving day. And I like to keep as much water as possible for our water bottles. So if I'm really planning ahead, I will have made water the night before, as filtered water the night before, for the coffee pot, for our water jugs, for the dog's water, and all of that. Stove top cover here. We like how it looks when we're not traveling. We like how it looks with this wood piece in front. But I did figure out one time when we left it this way, when the slides come in and this is all open, this thing slid all the way across. And so we have to turn it around. It was designed that way. And this thing is really heavy because it's open here. And it'll catch the back of the stove. travel and it can't it can't slide so but we don't like how that looks normally so I have to take a paper towel down because if you don't do that it'll all the way across the room and then these little tension rods I put in the cupboards so these will keep this stuff from toppling over and then potentially when you open your cupboard again it'll come flying out more tension rods. I already installed that one. And then we go to the fridge. And the last thing we do with the fridge is we put it on e-saver. I'm going to do that a little bit later because I also take a pool noodle, which, I'll sh which we'll show you. I put a pool noodle on here, through here and down here to keep this all shut.
Moving over here, I have a series of bunch of cords, which I'm getting to the point where I remember which one goes where, but I don't always remember. Basically the idea is to get them all sort of connected, so if one flies open, the other ones will keep it from doing anything. So I'm kind of getting to the last steps in here. Um, these fold down really nicely for travel. Um, we also fold this one down, we move the fridge out, and we strap that fridge. We don't know if we're going to keep this little mini fridge, but it's been kind of nice to have. Why do we have to get the mini fridge? We had to get the mini fridge because the refrigerator broke on our inaugural trip. And if you haven't seen that video, I'll link it right here. One of the final things I do in the kitchen um, is I replace this sink top. Some people don't like to travel with these on because they've broken. We've never had ours broken before. So I just travel with it and we'll take our chances. And then I strap this down because if you have any water in your water tank, this thing will easily come open during travel. So I try, so I strap it down really tight and it still can do this which I don't really like, but this is the factory setup that we have, and so we'll probably replace that. So sometimes there is water sort of all over, but not a lot, it, the faucet can't let go. So that's um, just a safety precaution there. So one of the first things on our checklist for Ryan is to fill the airbags on the truck, and we use our handy Vier air compressor. We would normally use the Vier to do the tires on the RV, but they're all good pressure, so we don't need to add any air this morning. So Ryan's going in here to turn off the propane. It's one thing you don't want to travel with your propane on. Some people do, but we don't for safety reasons. And then Ryan's got to deal with all of the water systems and the sewer systems. So he was draining the black tank already. That's one of the first things to get drained. Now he's dumping the gray tank because he's waiting for the gray tank to empty. Um, it empties out obviously through this, this big long hose here. He just disconnected our cable. The next thing Ryan does while he's waiting for the tanks to empty is to take off this stabilizing tripod. Right now he is disconnecting the water from the source and this is going to be a little bit more of a process because we just purchased this water softener so we don't even have a place to put that yet so we'll have to figure that out but he'll disconnect the water and he'll roll up the hoses We have a couple of fresh hoses. This is a new little piece we bought to go with the water softener. And then he has another fresh hose, which is the blue hose on the ground. And then the third hose he uses for flushing the sewer when we're getting ready to go. He's got to put gloves on because you don't want to deal with the sewer tank without putting gloves on. It's a messy job, but somebody's got to do it. So that orange piece is called a rhino blaster <laughs> and um, it'll clean the, you need to clean the sewer hose out before you stow it. things that he does is unhook us to shore power. That's our massive surge protector that we have. And he'll store worth that. Every <laughs> worth every penny, definitely. Before we do any hitching, we 
usually get the dog in the car because he gets really nervous when we start packing up. So we just get him in there and he can just chill out while we're while we're hitching up. Good boy. Jack is a lot more relaxed in the truck with his ducky. One more thing that I have to do is I have to come in here and turn off the water pump if we have it on and turn off the electric water heater. We never use gas um, and it's warm out right now so we don't do the tank heat. But then I'm going to bring in the slides. So I'm going to bring in the bed slide first. So I'm going to retract that. And that's going to move this slide in. And then I'm going to come over here and I'm also going to do the vanity slide. And just like that, we're all buttoned up. Getting down to the end here, Ryan is removing the X chocks that we have to keep our tires stable. Okay. We want to go through our checklist. Yeah. And that's secure. Okay. Uh, we got to sweep the steps quick. This is something I usually do at the last minute when Ryan's doing other things, but I'm trying to get this video filmed. Okay, Ryan is retracting our back jacks there, the middle and the rear. Before we hook up, we have a big checklist, as we said. And our rig will do this automatically. It's trying to bring us back up to hitch height. He's just removing the extra blocks that we use sometimes. And we won't be able to remove these last ones until we're actually hitched to the truck. And then he's going to take the um, towel that we put in our hitch because birds like to build nests up in there while we're stationary. I don't know if that would happen in Texas, but it probably would with all those yeah. blackbirds. Yeah. So we did learn that lesson early on. And then all of our electrical cords that hook to the truck are tucked up in there. So we have to get those down. He's going to fire up the truck and back it in. So he's going to back up almost. I'm going to check it. Stop! Stop! So I'm going to check to see. He is spot on. He's going to back onto the hitch. That's that. We're going to keep on with our checklist. So he's getting the hitch connected safely. Double checking that. And then he's going to come and he's going to connect the power cord to the truck. Yep. So we just did a pull test to make sure that the brakes are working. Yep, and then he's going to retract all on the landing gear and that's all of our landing gear is going to come up. And so we're fully attached to the truck at this point. And then one of the last things that we're going to do is we're going to lock these storage bay doors. And we're going to do a light test in the back. And then we are good to go. So we are finally on the road after moving day. Uh, usually takes us an hour, but um, not bad. So now you kind of know what it's like to hook up and what moving day looks like. And then when you get to your campground, you do it all in reverse and you put everything back. <laughs> so um, I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope it was helpful. And please subscribe to our channel. Give us a thumbs up. We'll see you on the road.